In the Cylinder Head 108 video, I talked at great lengths about the oil system, head components, and oil port modification you might need to do to the face of the deck. All the 7-bolt blocks use 11mm fasteners. The 6-bolt head studs, or head bolts, are 12mm. So if you want to put a 7-bolt head on a 6-bolt block, you need to enlarge the head bolt holes so you see there are two parts to that job. I only showed you one in that video. I found this video behind the stove. I think Caboose was playing with it and lost it there, but I just had to dig it out and share it with you. After Mike leveled the table of the bridge port, using a half inch drill bit, we drilled every single hole except for one. Half inch is 12.7 millimeters, so that's roughly 0.8 millimeters larger of a hole than the stud is. We're only showing you the tenth hole for two reasons, one being that it doubles as an oil supply, and the other is because we almost fell asleep drilling the first nine. Poor Mike, guy's got so much talent and all I'm making him do is grunt work like drill holes. Sorry bro, I guess it's five o'clock somewhere else. We also saved the teardrop hole for last because it's the only one that needs a little extra work. A lot of people just drill all of them out with a half inch and call it a day. But you'll notice there's a countersink almost three quarters of an inch into the head. That's the oil gallery and I want to countersink it with a larger bit in order to maintain its internal volume. I recommend a 37 64 inch drill bit for this, which is 14.68 millimeters. I asked Mike to drill down a few millimeters deeper to intersect with the hole for the head's main oil regulator supply. The factory hole doesn't intersect. It's past the countersink. Watch the Cylinder Head 109 video if you want the long version that explains in detail why I think this countersink is important whenever you do this kind of head generation swap. So the point I'm making is, if you're swapping parts from different generations, sometimes it creates a little bit more work for you and you need to pay attention to little details like these. Everything's easy when you leave things completely stock, but what's the fun in that? I found another video in my dryer's lint filter. It almost got away. It's another simple drawn out machining process that's only interesting once and then again only if it's in fast motion. It takes about 10 minutes to make a complete finishing pass with this machine. We're going to talk about the process here and resurface Mr. Bling. It goes like this. You install the correct cutter for aluminum. You level the head front to back and side to side to the cutting head. You check that measurement all the way across the deck and then make a test pass. In cylinder head 103, I showed you how to check for flatness of a cylinder head deck. We determined that this one was perfectly straight. If I were using a composite head gasket, I wouldn't need to resurface this head at all. Since we know it's not warped, I don't need to get to know this one any better by doing a shallow test pass. Its only defect is light impressions from the fire rings of the head gasket that don't even measure a thousandth of an inch deep. But we've got to cut it a bit deeper than that to get a quality cut. I'm going to use a multi-layered steel head gasket on my build this time around. The MLS gaskets require that you have a smooth, flat, mirror finished surface on both sides of the head gasket or else there's no way you'll ever get it to seal. It has a compressed thickness of 60 thousandths of an inch. The compressed thickness of the OE composite head gasket is 38 thousandths of an inch and that's 22 thousandths thicker than stock. A 20 thousandths combined deck height change can easily result in a quarter of a compression point loss on your build. Whenever you shave your head or your block, but you use the same kind of head gasket, you slightly raise your compression ratio because you decrease the size of the combustion chamber, and you also bring the pistons and the valves closer to each other. Valve clearance is a big deal if you're making major changes. There's supposed to be enough valve clearance once everything's torqued down to permit thermal expansion of the valves once they're hot. They actually grow, and that affects your spring pressure and lift. Because the valve to piston clearance is part of a 4G63's design, there's only enough meat built into both the head and the block decks for a combined total of eight thousandths of an inch for machining. Eight thousandths. And that's considering that you're using the same kind of composite head gasket that your car came with from the factory. A thinner head gasket would decrease that measurement. A thicker one would increase it. Find out what your compressed thickness is for the head gasket you're thinking about using before committing to buy it. They're not cheap. On my last build, I shaved my block and head a combined 17 thousandths of an inch. And using 9 to 1 compression pistons with a stock composite head gasket put me just a tad over 9.2 to 1 compression. That's 7 tenths of a point higher than a stock 2G and why I was getting about 8% more power out of a big 16G than most other people. It decreased the size of the combustion chamber and very slightly decreased the quench area, but because it would have put me 9 thousandths of an inch past the combined deck height service limit, I recessed my valves to make it fit. There you go, that was my secret. 
Using a thicker MLS gasket will increase the valve clearance as well as the quench area and the size of the combustion chamber by 22 thousandths of an inch. That's about the combined gap of what I've machined off of all of my parts at this point. Now that my larger valves are no longer recessed, but with my ridiculous camshaft selection, I will need to carefully check my valve clearances during assembly. I'll be sure to bring you along. I just wanted to show you the work being done to fit old Mr. Bling back on a 6-bolt block and to tell you why your head gasket selection is an important part of this process.